Hey guys, this is Production Music Live with a quick tutorial. Alright, so let's make this pop kind of plug sound here. We're playing this pattern. I copy this MIDI and put it on a new massive track. And let's take this new sound. Um, take down the master a little bit. Also put this one on solo. All right, so again at the init patch and let's go into the wave tables, go to digital hybrid and go down to guitar pulls. And it's quite interesting. We are looking for a wavetable that's actually below guitar pulse, but you can't select it from this list because, I don't know, maybe a line was forgotten or something. So if we go back and just take this little browser to the right knob here, this arrow, we end up at the B pulse. And that one is the one we want to actually use here. It's a bit low, so I'm bringing it up one octave. In the pitch. Okay, and let's quickly go through the wavetable positions here. This one seems to be a good one, so something between one and two o'clock. And let's add in a second oscillator playing the DigiGrain 2 wavetable. If we play that one alone, bring the pitch up. Let's check the wavetable positions here. Let's go into this drop down and select the formant. And play around with the intensity. So let's put the B pulse sound together again. Okay, and let's send both these guys to filter one. So I'm dragging up the controls and I'm selecting low pass four. And let's take down the resonance here. Let's check how far we want to go with the cutoff. So this is where actually the cutoff is starting. So let's take an envelope, maybe the second one here, and drag this one onto the filter cutoff and open it up until we're at 3 o'clock or something. And already it's getting a bit pluckier. And let's take down the decay level here. And also the decay length. And maybe the attack a little bit up. Alright, a little bit of release. That's actually not noticeable at the moment. Let's go to the fourth envelope. And back to the second. Okay, so what we just did is we increased the release on the amplifier envelope here, the last one in the chain and now we can also increase the release here.
can even think about bringing the attack level down a little bit. You can always adjust that depending on how much you want to have your sound cut through your mix. And let's actually create a macro control for the filter cutoff as well. So I'm dragging this second macro onto the filter cutoff, um, cut off down here and drag this guy up. Okay. And immediately you want to put on a delay sound. So I'm going to the second effect and I'm selecting sync delay, bringing the right one down to three over 16, feedback down to maybe like nine o'clock. Let's listen in. It should be a lot too much. Damp to 10, 11 o'clock and dry wet down. We don't really need much more than that. I'm putting a macro control onto this dry wet knob here and call this one delay. Actually, we can start it at zero and move it up that far maybe. So let's go to the first effect and select a chorus. So we can widen our sound a little bit. Let's listen in. So this is a bit too much. A bit less offset and a bit less depth here. Rate down as well. And dry wet down as well. And create a macro control for the chorus, chorus, and keep it somewhere here for now. And let's actually use one of our insert effects. Go to the routing page and yeah, we already have our first insert effect behind our filter cutoff here. So let's activate the first insert effect and select a um, parabolic shaper. So we're beefing up that sound a little bit. Nice, you can add a bit of drive to the sound here. If we put another macro control onto this dry wet knob, we can add drive here. Okay, sounds great already. Um, we can actually bring down the filter cutoff a bit further and increase those envelopes up a little bit. Now we have a wider range for our sound. Really cool already. And let's go to the voicing tab here. And, and see what we can do about the stereo spectrum. So a little bit of two voices and a little bit of detuning here. Um, and maybe check out our um, stereo spectrum. In this case, we have a sound that sounds better played at one voice uh, without any unisono.
So there we go, we have this nice poppy kind of plug sound. Have you ever had the feeling to be working with a synth without actually knowing what you're doing and how to achieve the exact sound you're looking for? My name is Francois and together with my friend Tom I'm running a channel and website called Production Music Live. Today we are going to learn how to use Massive. We will go through the complete interface step by step. We will learn how to create our own bass sounds, pads, plugs, leads and effects. And we will learn how to use Massive for advanced and state-of-the-art sound designs to achieve professionally sounding results. So let's get started.